Hi, my name is Poppy Edgecombe and I'm an exploration geologist. I'm here with Emma and Benny today in the central Lapland greenstone belt in Finland. Uh, this group is in age and it's an important host to many gold and nickel copper PGE deposits. Uh, today we're going to be showing you some soil and till sampling in boreal forest soils and these guys are going to talk you through the different soil horizons. Okay, so I've just all got a uh, hole into the forest soil and Emmett is going to explain to us the different soil horizons. The soil horizons we encounter in this auger is the L horizon, which is this plant material at the very start of it. And then below this we get the F horizon, the fermented material, which is decomposing plant material. Below us we get our AH horizon, which is then followed by the AE horizon, which is composed of leached material composed mainly of quartz, giving it its grey colour. The leach material is then enriched in the clays of this B horizon here. And then Benny, is there any extra points you'd like to add to that? Yes, let's discuss the importance of the soil stratigraphy here for mineral exploration purposes. Now in exploration geochemistry we want to sample um, soil material, especially in this um, very vegetated and forested areas where we have hardly any outcrop. Now, traditionally in uh, Fenoscandia, uh, what has been done is um, companies are using the bottom of till um, uh, sampling technique and that drills a hole down to the bedrock and samples uh, the soil just sitting on top of bedrock because it is thought that this material has been moved the least by glacial action. However, over the years, a number of different techniques have been uh, tried and tested on higher parts of the soil stratigraphy. So for example sampling the B horizon or sampling the H horizon as indicated earlier. Now let's quickly move up um, through these different uh, soil horizons and um, explain the, the relevance here. Now we uh, mentioned uh, bottom of till earlier. This is much further down uh, than we actually all got here. Um, ideally you would want to um, analyze this um, material using a very strong digest. Historically, um, just weaker aqua regia digests have been used to extract the um, anomalous base metals. However, I'm quite a fan of um, using stronger digests because um, these uh, bottom of till material can uh, um, provide some little geochemical indicators of bedrock and mineralization a lot better than uh, uh, some weaker aqua regia digests. Moving f uh, higher up into the B horizon, um, over the years the so-called um, mobile metal iron or ionic leach techniques have been developed and trialed and that's basically looking into um, using very weak leaches to extract the uh, base metal ions that are adsorbed to these clays and iron manganese hydroxides in this horizon. Now usually you have to um, sample from a continuous, from a continuous uh, depth no matter what um, uh, horizon it actually is because it has to do with the capillary effect that uh, uh, well that how, um, how water is being dragged up the um, soil profile. So usually it's the same depth in a, in a, a certain area and that is um, can be from 20 to 25 centimeters so slightly a bit further down here. Okay so those are these ionic leach uh, methods. You can also sample more the, um, the topsoil here, the mineral topsoil, the AH horizon, which is just a topmost A horizon and you can or usually find this within, you know, um, intergrained with these these roots uh, in, in, in the soil. Now, um, you could try some uh, aqua regia leeches again or some, some other uh, weaker leeches to extract the ions from here. In other places such as Canada, I've seen um, and I spoke to people who actually extract the vegetation up here. Um, to you know, analyze using aqua regia and then a, a multi-element uh, finish to that. So there's a whole range of um, techniques you can apply to uh, to um, analyze the soil. Okay, 
So enough about the auger. We also excavated a hole um, earlier on to show you how this soil stratigraphy looks like uh, when, you, uh, when you dig a, a test pit. And Emmett's going to uh, quickly go through uh, that with you. So the first thing we want to do on a test pit is cut a semicircle across the test pit. This was done prior to actually this test pit being dug. But then we want to remove the moss mat on top. Benny, would you like to give me a hand just yes, moving it surely. We want to keep this mat, mat, moss mat in place because once we're done, we want to recover the hole to make sure that nothing falls down the hole and it looks like we were never here. So within this hole, start with this first. So first we see our L horizon again here, just this moss material. If we look again, we can see our F horizon just below. And then again, we see our AH horizon. And below again, we see our leached material of the AE horizon in this gray color. And then below this, we see here, in this browny color, that's our B horizon. And B horizon continues through this test pit. But unfortunately, we don't see the C horizon in this hole because in this area, the C horizon could be down as far as seven, her seven meters, which is common in these boreal forests. And once we're done sampling the test pit, we'll refill it with this material that we take extracted from it. And then following that, we'll replace the moss map over this. An important thing to note in these test pits is that in this area, we find erratics that we don't expect. These erratics here are of a granite composition, which is not what we expect. We expect a phyllite to be uh, encountered here. At this very location? Yes, because the underlying geology is phyllites. But because of the transport in the area from glacial um, movement, these granites could have come from many kilometers away. So when we get our test results, we have to be careful that the assay we get from it isn't being contaminated from these glacial erratics. And this could especially be the case uh, if you use these weak leach topsoil um, um, sample techniques um, that such erratic boulders in the entire source stratigraphy can actually give you a false anomaly which you don't want. Okay. So what we'll do now is we'll put these erratics back in and we'll refill this hole and then we'll cover it back over with the moss mat. So I'll place this back in. So once the full hole is fully filled in again, we'll pat it down and then replace the moss mat overwards and pat that down again to ensure it looks like we were never here. All right, let's flip back the moss mat. Just pat this down first. So if you take a look at this now, you will see there's hardly any visible environmental footprint. So please, when you conduct your intensive soil survey campaigns, um, think about the environment, don't leave open holes and refill them back so they're looking as neat as this one. All right. Thank you very much for Poppy's and Emmett's help. Poppy, come here, <laughs> right here. Um, it's been great having you explaining parts of uh, the soil sampling. So thank you very much both. Thank you. And I hope the audience here Enjoy also enjoy it <laughs> and maybe is encouraged to do some more soil sampling around the world. Thank you. Thank you.